coffee with and he and Tracy. Hey guys, it is Thursday, February 2nd. It's Groundhog Day. If you haven't wow. watched the, what? That makes sense. All the memes you've been seeing on Facebook are starting to make more sense? I haven't been on Facebook. No, I just meant the math this morning. It's oh. like we did the same thing yesterday and the day before and the day before. Every day. So I got a report from our friends on uh, home birth that the nurse shark saw its shadow, so there'll be six more weeks of winter. If the nurse shark saw its shadow, it means it left the bottom. I know. It's trying to get up to warmer water. How unusual. How unusual. Didn't swim through your arms and want a nurse shark hug like uh, when J-Lo and I were swimming down at uh, Spanky's Reef. Spanky's. Spanky's wow. Reef with the Boy Scouts. See, down at sea base. again, I need a nickname. Spanky. Spanky was... I don't want to be Spanky, just to be clear. Where they buried the dog <laughs> at sea. It was a bulldog. That was his bulldog's favorite place to go swimming. And where the... Uh, bulldogs can't swim. I know. It's probably where it died. Probably. That's You're where just getting half the truth. The shark tours bring people out and feed the sharks. <laughs> that, let's bring a bunch of Boy Scouts out there to it dive. Was, it was buried alive at sea. Something like that. Anyway, we just passed Jekyll Island. We filled up with fuel. Nicest, nicest dock hands I think we might have ever been seen or, or seen at a place. So uh, he gave us some inside on Shark Tooth Beach, which was covered up with a field trip. We steered clear of that. Now we're going to Cumberland Island. It's probably a field trip that went to the sea turtle place and then went to the beach for lunch and to look for shark teeth before they go back to school. Yeah, it looks like the seagulls got into one of their lunch boxes. So. <laughs> <laughs> They'll learn. <coughs> so, um, Daniel, Miss Annie, we're missing you guys and your parents. Tom, we hope you get feeling better. Tom, I'm supposed to be doing a shout out to you. And this is something to make your head and my other networking geeks heads explode. We've done the upfit, almost everything's working right. The interconnectivity is where I'm, I'm having trouble. And I'm gonna work through it. I've got six disparate Wi-Fi networks on the boat. Six. And none of them want to talk to each other really well. And a no, lot of sounds like our kids. Uh, a lot of them, even if you hook them up wired, they don't play well networking wise because each one wants to be the dominant DHCP server. And it's a it's a proprietary thing that none of them play well together really well. But I'm gonna work my way through it. Six. Six. Tom, did your head just explode? And if I throw a Starlink on the boat, that could be like seven. And I'm not even talking about the printer, which is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. So that could really be technically eight. Then why is this a problem? Because you have to unhook from one to hook the other, to unhook the other. So this one doesn't talk to that, to talk to that, to talk to that. Oh, if I'm hooked up to the chart plotter, I can't see really what's going on with the Victron stuff. Oh. So you have to go into your settings and, and grab change. each network. Okay. Yes. I understand. Now she understands. I, I wasn't sure why it was a problem other than just like an OCD problem, but okay, I get it. It's not an OCD problem. They all should just get along. Get along. Can we all just get along? They should. Not Rodney King. That would be uh, Reginald Denny. Oh, God. They should Reginald Denny it. That's yeah. a throwback for you. We had a, uh, a nice chat with Sandy this morning about the Fusky Island and she's looking up, she's getting her Burns family book out because we've got some questions. Uh, we were telling her about summer there and uh, we're about to tell her about the Good Deeds Society. And what else do we have going on? Oh, Balmar. <laughs> this is what I really think of Balmar at the moment. 
the charge controllers manage the charging. And if you're idling, you're fine. But if you have any kind of rev on your engines, when your lithium BMS tops out, your BMS shuts off, and then even with the center fielder, it starts yo-yoing. Now, I don't have the ideal setup. Let me throw that out there from the beginning. I've got an older style Bomar 614 and a newer 618. The only difference is the 618 can hook up to the shunt and it has pre-programmed the LIPO4 settings that you've got to customize anyway. So it hits full. This one releases, this one goes under load and charges for like five or 10 seconds. Then this one releases and this one goes under load and it does this. I've made some setting changes and it's not as big of a surge like it was. This is more like a surge, 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 but you can hear it in either engine. And it drives you a little bit crazy. You don't want to hear that. My technical- That's not right. It's not right. My technical workaround is either go pull the fuse from one of them or turn the ignition off on one of my Yanmars. And if I do that, I don't have RPMs and I don't show which is fine when you're cruising along, but not okay when you're trying to anchor. We also lose water temperature and oil pressure when that happens, so we can't monitor that. To quote my cousin Benny, that's a bullshit answer. Um, so I called Bombar and they're like, Well, technically, and, and I gave him a lot of information up front, and he picked right up on it. I'm on a catamaran. So one engine's over in one hall, one engine's over in the other. I've got both the voltage regulators over here. So my charge sense lead that plugs into the back of the alternator going from this side to that side over there is 26 feet. Over here, it's only like four feet up to the mounting thing. So technically they've got to be exactly the same length. So it applies the same charge load to it. And there's the same impedance loss. Okay, I can do that. I can put a 26 foot loop over here on a 12 gauge wire. So there's the same amount of voltage drop on that. It's like, but then you gotta be careful. You can't coil it. You gotta make the, the loops really, really big so it doesn't make a huge magnetic field. And you need to go into the 614 and program every setting exactly like it is on the 618. 618 is supposed to be the dominant one. In the old school, you would call that Slave Master, but that's not PC anymore, so you can't use Slave Master. But here's all the kickers, and this is why I gave them the... I said, you know, a Bluetooth module is only 25 cents. This is the same stuff you've been putting out for 20 years. He's like, yeah, it's the same product we've been putting out for 20 years, and we were just bought by Dometic a couple of years ago. So we have the money to update our, our documentation now. Those cable links have to be the same. We didn't have the money to put it in our documentation before or to put it on our website. And we're coming up with a new unit. It'll come out in a couple of years. It's gonna be significantly more expensive, but you won't have to worry about different links of cable and, and any of that stuff. It'll take care of it automatically. You're the industry de facto. You didn't have the money to update a website or any of your documentation. I'll figure it out. I'll get it working. But shame on you, Bobo. That's enough ranting about that. Since you just like lost. I lost 90% of my population <laughs> here. We're going to Cumberland Island. We're going to walk around the beach. My first trip to Cumberland Island ever. Me too. I think. Yesterday was my first trip to Jekyll Island. We walked miles on uh, Driftwood Beach is where we were. <clears throat> and it was a great time, it was beautiful. Right after we dropped the anchor and went on shore, there was a bald eagle looking over our, uh, our boat and walked around the front of the island and we saw the bald eagle's nest. Nest. There was like a Toyota Tercel up in that thing. That, that eagle's nest was so big, so big. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to mention, uh, should mention it now or should mention another one. We have had a couple of people ask us about 
starting a Patreon. Uh, we're still bouncing that around, and Patreon is uh, where you support the arts or you support content like this. Um, for those of you that follow us, um, we do not, we're not monetized in any way um, on YouTube. <laughs> we got a long way to go. We've got like 254 subscribers as of today, uh, but we've got to have over a thousand and over uh, 4,000 watch hours, and we're not even near that. So some people are think are interested in possibly helping support us with this. A few bucks an episode and 15 bucks a month. Um, there's a crap pot right in front of us. So uh, it's just something we're bouncing around. If it's something you're interested in or want to talk to us about or get us ideas about, you can probably message us or, or talk to us because all of you guys, Rodrigo and Sandy and <laughs> Steven, you're all of our friends anyway. So uh, just hit us up. You know our digits. We're going to close things out for now. Love you guys. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. And pick up after yourselves. Uh, Jekyll was much cleaner. Didn't have to pick up, but a couple of things of trash. We'll see what Cumberland's like. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.